If you're creating music in GarageBand, especially if you're recording vocals, you may be aware that we have some vocal presets in here that we can select. There's a whole bunch of them, uh, and uh, we're gonna go through and look at each and every one of you and let you know what they do. Let's dive in here, shall we? So I've got my project called Perfect. This is a song from my uh, recent EP called Maybe, and uh, it sounds a little something like this. Oh, this for sure. So we've got a bunch of drums here, we've got some bass, we've got some keys, we've got some guitars, and importantly, we've got a bunch of vocals here as well. So we can solo out this vocal, and if we come just here to the chorus, it sounds like this. Life doesn't have to be perfect, to be wonderful. Now, when I first recorded these, I used a vocal preset to just give it a little bit of a, you know, reverb and delay and compression, but there's a bunch of vocal presets, and I often get asked, which one should I choose? What do they all do? Let's take a look here now, shall we? So, to change your vocal preset, if you're creating a brand new track, let's show you how to do that first. You would tap on the plus button here in the bottom left. You would go audio recorder, but instead of just hitting voice, if you go to more sounds in the bottom right corner, you can select from drums, keyboards, acoustic guitar, producer effects, fun effects but we're focusing on vocals today and you can see here we've got lead vocals radio ready punchy present sweet chorus pop overdrive heavy distortion extreme stereo extra singer and narrator let's take it one by one shall we so lead vocals is our first option here i use this quite often it's a good balance and blend here because we have a simple tone knob here for eq we've got pitch control so your enhanced tuning your auto tune you got a compressor you got some drive and you got some vocal hall these are basically the plugins that i use quite a bit so i do use lead vocals a lot when it comes to uh to recording vocals if you tap on this button here, go to your track view, uh, and whoops, that's the wrong one. We wanted this one, the mixer view. Uh, good job, Pete. So if you go to your mixer view, and we'll go back to here to tap on our microphone view as well, what we can do is we can see what each one of these is, what, what plugin and EQ it correlates with over here. So let's tap on this button here to bring out our plugins and EQ. So now you can see these ones here will all be different based on what you're doing over here. The easiest way to show this is see this pitch control and see how enhanced tuning is not on right now. Well, if we want to turn that on, we grab this dial and look what happens. Watch the blue light over here as we turn it up. There you go. This comes on. Enhanced tuning will turn on. As soon as we turn it back off, boom, look at it, grays out. So each one of these relates to one of these. And that's something that when you first start out, you may not realize. For instance, if we tap off the track reverb, check this out. Vocal hall goes off. If we now adjust the vocal hall, the track reverb comes back on. The same with our drive. This is our drive here. That's the overdrive that we see over there. And the much mysterious effect EQ is this tone knob. So if you've ever looked at Effect EQ and said, why do I need Effect EQ? It's this tone. And uh, you might think, well, why do I need tone? That's just bass and treble, yeah? Why would I need that when I've got visually Q? Well, you really don't. So if there's any plugin that I get rid of when I start using a vocal preset, it's gonna be Effect EQ, because I don't need a simple control there. And that's what you'll notice I've done. If we come back to our real world example up here on my lyrics, my vocals, uh, you can see here, we'll hit done on that one. You can see here that I've done exactly this. So if we go back to our microphone icon here, see how that's missing, that Effect EQ? It's because I got rid of it. And I got rid of it because I wanted to add in some additional delay here. So this one, I originally used Radio Ready, which has very similar ones. It also had Effect EQ, but it did didn't have overdrive so I was able to remove that and then add it add the overdrive back in because I got rid of the effect EQ but let's now go through that's the basics that's hopefully let you know how this all works let's go through and listen and look at all of these as we go so we're going to solo our vocal we've got it solo we do so as, as I was saying before our vocal sounds like this life doesn't have to be perfect and what I'm going to do I do have some master echo and master reverb on this track so I'm going to slide both of these down just so that we're not hearing anything else so if we play it now Life doesn't have to be perfect, to be wonderful. Right, now, so let's go through. You're going to get very sick of that little uh, phrase of this uh, by the end of the video, but uh, stick with me because this should be useful. So we're going to tap here on the microphone icon. Now, once you've selected a vocal preset, you can change it. And we're going to do that by tapping here, and uh, we'll go to lead vocals first of all. Then just hit done, and here you go. So these are the basics that we've got here. We've got tone, which we've already explained, is a simple bass and treble adjustment. So if we play here. Have 
To be perfect. Based. To be wonderful. Treble. Now, I don't use that very often, as we talked about, because you have visual EQ over here. So I use the visual EQ to adjust my bass, mids, and treble if I want to do some EQing. We have pitch control, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's going to help us control our pitch. So we're going to hit play. Hey. Oh, too early, but... Life doesn't have to be perfect, to be wonderful. Now, I turned it up to full just so you can hear the effect of pitch control, but you generally want to either not use pitch control or I tend to use it about 10 to 20%, just in case there's a few little bits that I need to adjust. And I do have another video here on the channel that talks all about pitch control and auto-tune and how to use it in a subtle way. So you can check that one out uh, if you want to learn more about that. Your compressor here. This is, or turn that off, compressor is just a simple way of controlling this compressor. So if we come in here to this compressor, this is an easy way to see what this does. So with the compressor down, the mix is all the way down and your threshold is up. All the compressor knob does is brings how much compression, the mix up and the threshold down. So that that's all that's doing. So it's just a quick way. If you come in here and you've set your ratio, you've set your attack, you've set your gain, and then you want to change your compressor, add a little bit more. Instead of having to come in here and drop your threshold and pull your mix up every time, you can use this as a shortcut knob. Yep, you heard me, shortcut knob. And that's going to adjust those over on the left by just turning that one up and down. So that's a pretty cool little hack to make your compression a little bit easier. And compression, if you don't know about it, is uh, the ability to increase the volume without actually increasing the peaks. So what it basically does is it squashes down the high, the peaks of the volume, and pulls all the quiet parts up. Very good for vocals. And I talk about compression in a bunch of other videos too. Let's play this now and turn up the compression. Life doesn't have to be perfect, to be wonderful. So turning that up can really help it cut through the mix, as can this next one, which is drive. You might be thinking, why do I want some overdrive on my vocals? Well, when you're recording with a digital audio interface, you get a very clean sound, which is great, but sometimes you want a little bit of that gravel that you used to get from an analog recording or a bit of tape. So you want to turn the drive up to uh, to give yourself a little bit more edge. So if we hit play. Have to be perfect, to be wonderful. Life doesn't have. So yeah, you don't want to go quite that nuts, but yeah, just a little bit of drive can really help you there. And again, that is related to this overdrive knob here. So yes, as you go up, it not only brings the drive up, but it brings the tone down. So you get a more bassy, gravelly drive and you get more of it as you turn that up and down. You can, of course, then go in and fine tune it over on the side here and that won't adjust the drive knob here unless it does. <laughs> So you can use both of those depending whether you want the quick way or the more advanced way. And finally, vocal hall, which is the track reverb. So right down the bottom here. And once again, same sort of situation here. As we go vocal hall up, the amount of uh, wet mix goes higher. As we bring it down, it goes lower. So this one won't adjust any of these settings. It'll just adjust the amount. But you can, of course, come in here and change your reverb time. So if we wanted a much longer reverb on this, we could do something like this and uh, play our vocal. Have to be perfect. Turn it up more. To be wonderful. Life doesn't have to be... So you can play around with that at to your heart's content. So let's just bring this back in the mix and see if uh, this randomness that we've done has made any difference to this. Life doesn't have to be perfect, to be wonderful. Life doesn't have to be perfect. So you can go ahead and start tweaking that in your mix. And I do recommend, even though I've soloed here just to show you what each thing does, I highly recommend that when you're actually mixing, you mix with all of your tracks playing because no one listens to your music in solo, right? Everyone's going to listen to it all together. So make sure that you're mixing all together. Right, let's uh, let's solo this and let's look through these others because I'm sure you're keen to find out some of the other weird and wacky vocal presets we have. First thing you'll notice is that the lead vocals here now has a little dot next to it. That means we've actually made some changes to that. So if you have tweaked your vocal preset and you're like, I love this preset so much, you can actually save that. So if you tap on that and hit this save button here now, I could, I could save this as lead vocals PJ and uh, hit the enter key. And what's gonna happen is down here under my customs, I'm gonna have that. So instead of choosing a vocal preset, I can go to my custom preset and you can save as many custom presets as you want. And that's gonna help you in your future songs if there's a particular vocal style you want. Let's go through the rest of these. Radio Ready, what has this one got in it? 
Well, very similar as you can see here. We've got tone, pitch control, compressor. We've covered those. This time though, we've got delay and we've got ambience. And the easiest way to find out what these do is to come here to go to our plugins and EQ. And as we turn up, uh, as we turn off over here, you'll see which one goes off here. So the ambience is actually a stereo delay and the delay is a tape delay. So we can turn these on and off and when we turn them back on, they come back on. In fact, they're kind of combined, aren't they? Because they're kind of the same thing. Because that one, that's your ambience, that one. And then your tape delay is that one. But when you turn tape delay back on, I oh know, they are separate. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, but these ones don't have any other parameters over here. So I don't really recommend these. If I was going to do this and I'm using Radio Ready, what I'll often do is come in here and remove these and then add in something like a regular echo here, so a track echo, because then I get complete control over my delay. But assuming that you just wanted the easy way and you choose Radio Ready, you can just add in as much delay or ambience as you want. So because we've showed the others, let's play this uh, vocal now and I'll turn up the delay. You'll hear what that one does. Life doesn't have to be perfect, to be wonderful. And then the ambience. Life doesn't have to be perfect, to be wonderful. So if you're listening in stereo, you can hear that the ambience is definitely doing that stereo delay. So uh, that is what you can do there and uh, you're good to go. Uh, so that is radio ready. Let's go to our next one, Punchy Presence. Now I used to use Punchy Presence a lot and I still do quite a bit. Uh, we'll come back out of here just so that we can go back to our default. So Punchy Presence, this time around, we've got uh, two knobs here for our effect EQ. And again, we can work that out by turning it here. So this time we've got independent low and high controls. So if you wanted to, in this case, boost both your bass and your treble, you can do that. You've got your standard compressor. And once again, you've got your tape delay and your stereo delay. So Punchy Presence, very similar but you'll notice the one thing missing is pitch correction. So if you want to pitch correct, and the, it's a good point to pause here, that if you do want that pitch correction yeah, or the enhanced tuning, you can't add it here after the fact. So you have to start with a preset that actually has it. So you need to start with your radio ready or your lead vocals if you want pitch control. If you start with punchy presence and then realize you want pitch control later, guess what? You've got to tap it and you've got to go back to radio ready or lead vocals and then tweak your plugin settings from there. So punchy presence won't show any more than that because there's no new uh, EQ, no new plugins that are used there. Sweet chorus. Now we're getting into the what I call the uh, the weirdo ones. So sweet chorus. Uh, this time we have a compressor. We have stereo delay. We have the effect EQ, which is just our tone knob once again, but we have a chorus and we can adjust the chorus here by adjusting it specifically, or we can use our shortcut dial. That's going to turn the, the chorus rate up and down. What does chorus sound like? You're probably familiar with this, but if you are not, it sounds a bit something like this. To be perfect, to be wonderful. Life doesn't have <laughs> Exterminate. Perfect, Exterminate. So yeah, so you have some options there that you can actually do to uh, add some chorus. And of course, if you if you want a chorus, the reason I don't use sweet chorus is what I would probably do is use lead vocals. Uh, and then instead of actually adding the chorus, I would just get rid of, so come in here, we'd edit, we'd get rid of the effect EQ and you could just add in a chorus manually. So that way you get the best of both worlds. You get the pitch control, you get the compressor, you get the uh, overdrive and the reverb, and you can add in your own chorus. So you can mix and match by just adding additional ones as well. Let's tap again, pop overdrive. This time we've got that drive again. So the same one again there. We've got stereo delay and we've got tape delay. So this one is very similar to uh, something like your Radio Ready that you've got down here with just some slight tweaks to uh, some of your, your settings that you have there because it's got the drive in there. So it's a bit of a combination of Radio Ready and uh, lead vocals together. If you like that, do that. Heavy distortion is exactly what it sounds like. This time we've got stomp boxes. And this is one of the weird ones because you can see here, stomp box is not something that we can add in to vocals usually. So if you want this distortion, you can do it this way. And if we play this vocal, with some, let's go to a bit different part of the vocal. If we play this. Oh, but there's a battle ahead. So yeah, you're getting distortion and you can, uh, you can change these around. And you can, of course, turn things off by... Oh, no, you can't. You can't turn off the stomp box on this one. There you go. So. And sometimes the war is in your head. 
So this is why I've very rarely used this one because you don't get a lot of control. Once again, if I was going to, if I wanted some of that distortion, what I would do is I'd use something like Punchy Presence and then come in here and edit it and actually add in either an overdrive or a distortion plugin right there. And then you've got full control over your distortion. So I don't tend to use heavy distortion for that reason. We're into the final stretch here. Extreme stereo is again, pretty much what it sounds like. We've got a stereo delay, but this time we've got this mysterious ring shifter plugin. You heard me, ring shifter. So this is going to do some cool, funky stereo effects. So if we hit play on this vocal now, you can hear it's, it's really pushed it wide. So we've got this wide stereo mix. If we thicken it up, we start getting more of a flange coming in there. And once again, all we've got here is stereo delay and ring shifter. So it doesn't give you a whole lot of control there. I don't mind this, but once again, what I would do if I wanted some stereo effect in here or, and some chorus is I'd go something like Radio Ready and then edit this down, remove, say, your effect EQ and maybe one of your delays, and I would add in here, I'd add your chorus here to get that chorus effect that we had there. And then if I wanted a stereo effect, I would use something like the free wider plugin here from Infected Mushroom because this can give you a really cool stereo width to your vocal like this. Don't know what is left to say. So I can kind of mix and match there and get a lot more control rather than using the extreme stereo. But if you just want a quick way to get extreme stereo, you can go with that. Right, two to go. Extra singer. Whoa, we suddenly got six knobs because we've got two microphones here. What the heck is going on here? Uh, we'll play from this part, from this little bridge part here, because this might be an interesting one. Let's just play. This is going to explain itself when we listen to this one. Say, cause sometimes you had a way and look back on your mistakes. So what the heck are is going on here? Well, what this is imploring employing employing is this vocal transformer. And by default, it's put the pitch down at minus 12, the format down minus 7. Now, I've talked about the vocal transformer and changing pitch here in GarageBand, and there's other videos you can check out. Search my name, Pete John's Pitch, or Pete John's Vocal Transformer. You'll learn all about this. But basically, what we can change here is the pitch here is going to change the pitch, and you can see there over on the left. So if instead of it going uh, a, an octave down, we want it to go an octave up, we can do this. And now instead of having that second voice being an octave lower... Thanks. It's now higher. But you cannot turn back time. And we can change this formant too, which is just another parameter here that will change the way this sounds. And make everything seem fine. And once again, because you've got this control over here, if we wanted to go, say, two octaves above on that voice. So remember. So... Yeah, do I use this? Have I ever used this? No. Uh, is it fun to play around with? Yeah, maybe if you want, if you had some backing vocals and you wanted some weirdo effects on there, you can do that. So again, your, your pitch and your form and control here are your vocal transformer. Your ambience over here are these ones here, your stereo delay. Your tape delay is this delay here. And then your tone is that amazing effect EQ that really is not that relevant. So if you're going to sacrifice anything, remember, always sacrifice your effect EQ because you've got a visual EQ that does exactly the same thing. Last but definitely not least is the narrator. And this is just for spoken word. Okay, thanks. No, <laughs> it's just for spoken word. So with this one, what we have here is a couple of knobs. Yep, um, a couple of knobs. And uh, we have tone and presence this time. So you'll notice we've got two effect EQs here. So we've got tone and presence. So we can turn those on and off. And as we turn these up and down, you can see we can adjust the tone and the presence. So this is a very simple way. And we've got resonance too. Actually, resonance is one of the effect EQs, isn't it? It's actually tone and... Oh, it's presence and resonance. There you go. They both go off with that one. <laughs> so we can adjust these in here. So if we hit play, Life doesn't have some resonance. To be perfect, to be turn the resonance down. Life doesn't have present to be perfect, to be wonderful, they say. But sometimes And this can actually work exactly as it says. This is a good one to use if you do have spoken word and you've got maybe some background hiss or some noise and you just want to adjust some of that. You'd hear there when I did the resonance there, if we go back to here. 
Life doesn't have to be perfect, to be wonderful. If you want that kind of AM radio sound, you can boost it up. And if you want more of like a clean NPR sound, you can pull it down. <laughs> so that is it. That is every single vocal preset that we have. Now, don't forget, you've got drum presets, keyboards, acoustic guitar, producer effects, and fun effects here. So you can play around to your heart's content. You can mix and match. So remember, you don't have to use what it gives you by default. You can come out here. You can edit these, remove, especially the effect EQ and add in to mix and match. But do keep in mind that if you want that pitch control, you've got to start with either lead vocals or radio ready.